Gentlemen. Hoist the colors. It's not over. Sorry, I don't even, I, I don't, I don't know your name. Kira Knightley is a famous British Hollywood actress who has won not only prestigious movie awards, but also millions of hearts around the world. Her exquisite looks, rebellious spirit, and acting talent allow her to land a wide variety of roles effortlessly. In this video, we'll cover the career and personal life of this talented British woman. Kira Knightley, How the Pirates of the Caribbean Star Lives, and How Much She Earns. <laughs> gonna be amazing. Kira Christina Knightley was born on March 26, 1985, in the suburbs of London to British actors Will Knightley and Charmin McDonald. By then, the couple already had a six year old son, Caleb. The girl was named after Kira Ivanova, the first Soviet figure skater to become an Olympic medalist. It's no surprise, because at that time, half of Europe was rooting for the charming young athlete. She was meant to be named Kira, the anglicized form of Kira. However, her mother misspelled the name when she registered the birth certificate, writing the E before the I. From a very early age, Caleb and Kira were immersed in theater life. Parents not only took them to all sorts of plays, but also taught their children the basics of acting skills. Feeling experienced enough to be an actress, three-year-old Kira demanded to hire herself a theater agent. And she did get one, though not until three years later. But by the time she was seven, in 1991, she starred in the TV series Screen One in the episode Royal Celebration. The role was small, but it served as a great stepping stone to the start of her brilliant career. Over the next eight years, Knightley was busy appearing in British TV series, commercials, and even getting small roles on the big screen. For example, in the films A Village Affair, Innocent Lies, and The Treasure Seekers. Meanwhile, the girl was doing great in school. While still in preschool, she was diagnosed with dyslexia a very common condition among gifted people that impairs the ability to read and write. The parents devoted a lot of time and effort to working with their daughter, thanks to which the condition was completely eliminated, and the efforts made allowed the girl to become an excellent student at school. In 1999, Kira starred in George Lucas's legendary blockbuster Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace. She got the role of the maid and body double of Queen Padme, played by Natalie Portman. I am Queen Amidala of the Naboo. I come before you in peace. The two girls looked so strikingly similar that even their own mothers could not tell them apart in makeup, and the audience and critics were convinced that both roles were played by Portman. In the same year, the British miniseries Oliver Twist was released, in which Kira played the role of young Rose Fleming. In 2001, the British thriller The Hole hit theaters, where the actress got one of the main roles. During the filming of this movie, guy actors liked to walk around half-naked in front of the actress who was 15 years old at the time, which infuriated her. In the same year, the audience saw Knightley in the TV movie Princess of Thieves in the role of brave bandit Gwyn. On the set of this movie, Kira had her first intense relationship with Irish actor Del Sinat, which lasted two years but ended in a breakup. 2002 was a fruitful year in terms of premieres. The actress starred in the drama Pure and in a miniseries based on Boris Pasternak's novel Dr. Zivago as Lara Antipova. Take me with you. I'll help you. I'll be a teacher too. I'll teach the littlest ones. Pasha, we can be married. Lara, please. Don't say things like that when you don't mean them. 
At that time, the actress was only 17 years old, and it was her first time to go to the shooting by herself. The footage was filmed in Slovakia and the Czech Republic, and in Prague, the actress was placed in the red light district for some reason. Then, the girl met and befriended a local lady of the night who lured customers under Kira's windows every night. The actress also tried her hand at the unusual genre of sports comedy, starring in the movie Bend It Like Beckham. I used to play for the men's club, and she used to hang around here whining that there was no team for her to play on. Oh, I wasn't whining. <laughs> nah, there was nothing here for us girls. I mean, there was like junior boy stuff, but... The famous athlete did appear in the movie as himself, though only for a few seconds, which probably helped it gross a decent box office of almost $77 million. Kira herself finally gained wide popularity after this movie. In 2002, the actress graduated from high school and enrolled at Asher College to study history, art, and English literature. However, it wasn't so easy to combine education and filming, and in the second year of study, she had to make a difficult choice in favor of cinema. In 2003, the actress appeared in one of the short stories of the movie Love Actually, which also starred Hugh Grant, Liam Neeson, Martin Freeman, and other screen stars. Many viewers noticed the huge dark blue hat on Knightley's head. It turns out that this accessory was not the director's idea at all, and served as a disguise for a large pimple that popped up on the forehead of the actress right before the shooting. We've never got friendly, but I just wanted to say I hope that can change. I'm nice. I really am, apart from my terrible taste in pie, and it would be great if we could be friends. Many years later, Kira laughingly recounted this in an interview, jokingly commenting on the incident, this is the problem with being 17 and being in films. However, the young actress had no problems with finding new boyfriends. In 2003, she began dating musician and future star of the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, Jamie Dornan. But after two years of relationship, the actors broke up. In the same year, the first installment of the adventure saga Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl was released. That's the secret grand adventure of the infamous Jack Sparrow. He spent three days lying on a beach drinking rum. Welcome to the Caribbean, love. The movie was inspired by a Disneyland ride called Pirates of the Caribbean. Walt Disney himself was involved in the creation of the attraction, and it opened shortly after his death in 1967. The world premiere of the film took place on June 28, 2003 at Disneyland, after which the attraction was closed for renovation, expecting a large number of fan visitors. The path from the idea to the realization of the movie was quite long. The creators of the film tried to sell the idea to movie companies back in the 90s, but were rejected. Initially, the project was called just Pirates of the Caribbean, but in the process of filming, it became clear that there would be sequels, so they added the mention of a pirate ship to the main title. Kira Knightley got the lead female role, and she brilliantly portrayed the gentle but courageous Elizabeth Swan. Kira's casual look with her short haircut didn't quite fit the image of the governor's young daughter, so the 18-year-old actress wore a wig on camera. By the way, her casting competitor was beautiful Jessica Alba, but director Gore Verbinski liked Kira very much and gave the role to her. The movie turned out to be vivid, fast-paced, and memorable, bringing in $654 million at the box office on a budget of $140 million as well as five Oscar nominations and one Golden Globe nomination. The BAFTA Awards jury gave the movie the award for Best Makeup and also nominated it in four other categories, including Best Special Effects. The actress also received nominations for the MTV Channel Award and Saturn. Despite the fact that after the release of the film, Knightley became really famous worldwide, her next films were unsuccessful. The historical drama King Arthur and the thriller The Jacket were poorly received by critics and audiences alike. 
and flopped at the box office. Kira got back into the game almost immediately. In 2005, the drama Pride and Prejudice premiered, based on the work of the same name by Jane Austen. Ladies don't seek to seem too easy. Mr. Collins, I am perfectly serious. You could not make me happy, and I'm convinced I'm the last woman in the world who could make you happy. I flatter myself, cousin, that your refusal is merely a natural delicacy. The role of Elizabeth Bennet was especially important for Kira, as she always felt a remarkable connection with the character bordering on obsession. But director Jill Wright initially doubted the choice. Knightley had already started filming for the action movie Domino and as a result had a short haircut and prominent muscles. It all changed by a personal meeting, after which Joe was absolutely mesmerized by the girl. The hair issue was again solved with a wig, and strong arms were concealed by the long sleeves of the dresses. Needless to say, Kira went all in on this role. She was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for her superb acting and was also nominated for an Oscar for the first time. The movie received a total of four nominations, enjoyed an enthusiastic reception from audiences, and grossed $120 million at the box office. She was riding a wave of success when the biographical action movie Domino premiered. Why would a delicate little thing like you want to be a goddamn bounty hunter? I want to have a little fun. The story of an English bounty huntress, rebel and daughter of the famous actor Lawrence Harvey with an unusual name Domino interested director Tony Scott. He found Miss Harvey in Beverly Hills and persuaded her to sell the screen rights to her life for $360,000. Knightley received a fee of $2 million for this role and her co-star was infamous Mickey Rourke. But neither a compelling story nor Domino herself being on the set helped the movie take off, and it failed miserably at the box office. The box office barely made it to half of the budget spent. By the way, Knightley's character prototype has never seen the film. At the time of its release, she died of a painkiller overdose at the age of 35. At the same time, Kira ended her year-long relationship with American actor Adrian Brody. And then in 2005, she found a new boyfriend, British actor Rupert Friend. The couple stayed together for five years. In 2006, the audience saw a sequel to the pirate action movie titled Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Oh, fine! <laughs> Let's just pull out our swords and start banging away at each other! That's what's all there! I have it! I have it! We're wobbly legged from some pirates! By the way, the second and third installments were filmed at the same time, and their total budget amounted to about $450 million. After the release of the first movie, it was obvious to everyone that the movie company had stumbled upon a gold mine, and fans were literally going crazy with impatience to see more adventures of the beloved characters. Box office receipts also didn't disappoint. The film grossed $1 billion. The creators of the film won an Academy Award for visual effects, and Kira was nominated for an MTV Channel Award. It is unknown how much she earned for the role, but her fee for the third movie, which was released the following year, amounted to $5 million. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End also grossed almost $1 billion, and the actress was nominated for an MTV Movie Awards. Prepare every vessel that floats. At dawn, we're at war. In 2007, Kira starred in the drama Silk and military drama Atonement based on the novel by contemporary British writer Ian McEwan. Look at me. Look at me. Come back to me. The film was again directed by Jill Wright, who was honored to open the Venice Film Festival with his film. The movie generated a storm of positive reviews and won numerous awards, including an Oscar, two Golden Globes, and over two dozen nominations. Kira has been nominated for a Golden Globe as Best Actress, a BAFTA, and an Empire Film Award. However, the actress didn't get along well with the Daily Mail. In 2007, 
Kira sued the publication after a picture of her in a bikini was placed next to an article about a woman who blamed slim celebrities for her daughter's death from anorexia. She eventually won the trial, receiving compensation that she donated to an eating disorder foundation. Many years later, the celebrity admitted that during that period, she had a nervous breakdown and later she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder caused by the sudden fame that fell upon her. She had been unable to leave the house for months and underwent hypnotherapy to deal with panic attacks that occurred during her outings. The girl was also very self-conscious when people discussed her body. Movie companies even enlarged her breasts on movie posters, which infuriated Kira. She sees no point in hiding her natural forms and now demands not to make them bigger than they are. In 2008, the biographical drama The Edge of Love was released, the script for which was written by Kira's mother, Sherman MacDonald. But the film wasn't successful and went virtually unnoticed. The next bright role in Knightley's filmography was Georgiana Cavendish in the melodrama The Duchess. I have many faults, as you well know. Not least among them is my ability to draw attention. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage. The movie was heavily banked on from the beginning. The studio bought the screen rights, paying $7 million, and the film's promotion opaquely hinted at Cavendish's family ties to Princess Diana, hoping to attract the attention of her army of fans. Knightley vehemently opposed this publicity move, saying that the Duchess is interesting in her own right, with no ties to the story of Britain's late favorite. In 2010, the melodrama Last Night premiered, starring Kira Knightley from England, Sam Worthington from Australia, Eva Mendes of Cuban descent, and Guillaume Canet from France. But the multinational cast and tear-jerking plot didn't help the movie. Audience reviews were very lukewarm, with box office receipts totaling just over $7 million. You are a terrible liar. It might be because I don't lie. She likes you, and you like her. Of course, you don't want to talk to me about it. Where does this come from? My eyes, Michael. Next came the crime drama London Boulevard with Knightley, which the public characterized as a bunch of nonsense and a searing disappointment. The movie Never Let Me Go also suffered the same fate. It was released in 2010 and brought the actress a nomination for the Saturn Award. The sci-fi comedy Seeking a Friend for the End of the World was released in 2012 and wasn't successful either. Between these films, there was a miniseries Neverland in which Kira voiced Tinkerbell and the historical drama A Dangerous Method, which tells about the difficult relationship between the founders of psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. But Kira's performance has sparked great discussions behind the scenes of various film festivals. Experts agreed that the actress severely overacted and looked extremely unnatural. What may have brought on these attacks you suffer from? <laughs> Humiliation and the members of the Saturn Awards jury were of a different opinion. They nominated Knightley for Best Actress. In February 2011, Kira Knightley had a fateful acquaintance with the vocalist and keyboardist of the British indie rock band Claxon's James Wrighton, but more on that later. In 2012, the drama Anna Karenin was released, directed again by Joe Wright. Oh, to be your age again. Surrounded by that, that blue mist. I was 18 too when I got married. In this movie, Kira co-starred with Jude Law and received a nomination for the European Film Academy Award. Then the audience saw the movie begin again. In this musical comedy drama, Kira replaced Scarlett Johansson, who dropped out of the project. I'm just tagging along on this. I'm, I'm really happy to be here and, and more than happy to accompany Dave on a couple of tracks. How sweet is this girl? I love that. <laughs> The film was generally well received by both critics and audiences, allowing it to earn $63 million at the box office, eight times the film's budget, and on May 4, 2013, James Wrighton and Kira Knightley had a wedding in the town of Mazan in the south of France. 
The celebration was modest, only the closest friends of the couple were invited, and the bride even decided to reject the classic outfit in favor of an elegant but strict jacket and a light dress by Chanel. After being married at the local municipality, the husband and wife and their guests went to celebrate the occasion at an estate owned by the Knightley family. 120 bottles of wine and champagne were purchased for the buffet. The ring that the groom gave to the bride was inherited from his grandmother, but Kira was especially touched by another gift. James gave her a 100-year-old olive tree that he had planted in the garden of the French estate. On the trunk, the man touchingly scratched their initials and their wedding date. 2014 brought Kira three interesting premieres at once the action movie Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit and romantic comedy drama Laggies, directed by Lynn Shelton, were released. The main role in it was originally given to Anne Hathaway, but the actress refused it due to the filming of Interstellar and Song One. Another gem of that year was the biographical war drama The Imitation Game. And what is it that we're really doing? We're going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. The movie was based on Andrew Hodge's book, Alan Turing, The Enigma. The story of breaking the code of the German Enigma encryption machine during World War II attracted a lot of attention from movie experts, and Knightley's performance received nominations for an Oscar, Satellite Golden Globe, BAFTA, and an Actors Guild Award. The movie earned $233 million at the box office. Notably, the niece of the famous English mathematician, whose story is told in the movie, completely disagreed with the choice of Knightley for the role of Joan Clark, saying that her uncle's colleague was much more straightforward than the character created by the actress. Then, the actress's filmography featured a movie of a very unusual genre for her the biographical survival adventure Everest, which tells of the tragedy that occurred with the expedition of New Zealand mountaineer Rob Hall in 1996. Interestingly enough, the scenes with the actress were filmed in just six days. In May 2015, there was a pleasant change in the Knightley Wrighton family. The couple had a daughter whom the happy parents named Eddie. After the child's birth, Kira quickly recovered and resumed her acting career. In 2016, director David Frankel released the drama Phantom Beauty, starring her among other stars, including Helen Mirren, Will Smith, Kate Winslet, and Edward Norton. Shed your skin. Find your life. Hits you here. That does hit me here. Right? You can have it for free. Just wait, wait, wait. In 2017, there was the premiere of the fifth installment of the franchise, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. To the great disappointment of the fans, the film was heavily inferior to the predecessors and received mostly negative reviews. By the way, Kira only appeared in a small scene at the end of the movie as Elizabeth, Will Turner's wife. It would be reasonable to put an end to the outdated franchise, but there is talk of filming the sixth installment of the Pirates saga, titled A Day at the Sea. Jack Sparrow, Will, and Elizabeth Turner are indicated as the main characters. However, it is reported that this will be the first movie without Johnny Depp, and it's still unknown who will replace the charismatic actor. In 2018, there was the premiere of the adventure family film The Nutcracker and the Four Realms in which the actress played Sugar Plum Fairy, as well as another biopic which recounts the fate of the French writer Colette. You've been lying to me all this time. I wait for you all day long, and I never ask you for anything because you say we have no money. But it's true, we have no money. Would you spend it all on her? I really don't. And then, and then. The following August, Kira gave birth to James's second daughter, who was named Delilah. Knightley admitted that it's much more difficult to deal with two children and it was far from easy to combine motherhood with work. She had a particularly difficult time shooting in the movie Official Secrets, released in early 2019. That same year, she starred in the romantic anthology Berlin, I Love You, as well as the war drama The Aftermath. You didn't tell me what I was walking into. This isn't how it was supposed to be. None of this is how it is supposed to be. And yet here we are. 
In this movie, her character appears nude to the audience, but the body doesn't belong to Knightley, but to her double. The following year saw the release of the comedy Misbehavior, followed in 2021 by the drama Silent Night and the animated feature film about a German-Jewish artist during World War II, Charlotte. In it, Kira voiced the main character. Boston Strangler, a crime thriller based on true events, premiered in 2023. That's everything. All right, give me some time. I gotta wade through this pile of first. Don't wait on these. Thank you. They're good leads. The movie is on the Hulu platform and has received mixed reviews from the audience. Fans are eagerly awaiting release of new films with Knightley, the crime thriller Candy Store, the series The Other Typist, in which she acts as a producer, and Black Doves are in production. Due to the high demand and productivity of the actress, her fortune is now estimated at $80 million. Her revenue growth dynamics are quite high, thus compared to 2019 figures, her fees have almost doubled. Meticulous analysts also calculated that Kira earns 100 times more than her spouse. Apart from filming, the beautiful actress is quite popular with advertisers. She became the face of the advertising campaign of the legendary perfume Chanel Mademoiselle, as well as jewelry and makeup of the same brand. At the age of 18, she promoted the British jewelry house Asprey and then became the protagonist of a commercial for the Scottish brand Black Dog Whiskey. In addition to all this, Kira also plays in the theater. Kira is no stranger to being altruistic, and in 2018, she was appointed Officer of the Order of the British Empire for services to drama and charity. The actress was previously involved in a campaign against domestic violence. The two-minute movie tells the story of an actress who, after a long day at work, is assaulted by her partner who accuses her of infidelity. This issue, which, like a virus, has affected almost all parts of society, hits close to Knightley's heart. In 2015, Kira Knightley and Emma Watson joined the charity Women for Women, which launched a campaign for stars to sell their branded clothing to benefit women in countries at war. Among the items were Kira's favorite Christian Louboutin shoes, which she only wore on special occasions. And in 2020, she joined the Amnesty Campaign to find the UK's most inspiring human rights activists across the country. These days, the actress is very much concerned about what is going on in the world. After the publication of the diaries of 12-year-old Yeva Skeletska from Kharkov, entitled You Don't Know What War Is, Kira volunteered to voice the audiobook. To maintain her family's privacy, Kira Knightley doesn't have any official social media accounts. Unlike her colleagues, she doesn't strive for excessive luxury, remaining committed to a rather modest life. She is sure that money spoils people and tries not to lose her sense of moderation, even when living in wealth. However, her garage contains five vehicles. The legendary car Porsche 911 Carrera 4S has a special place in the actress's heart. It's equipped with a 3-liter six-cylinder engine boasting 443 horsepower. The actress also owns a luxury sedan Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which not only has a stylish exterior and comfortable interior, but also impressive technical performance. Another piece in her collection is a creation of the General Motors Group, the Yukon XL SUV, popular in the U.S. Kira also has a Hyundai Tucson, which is quite modest in comparison. It's an unassuming, everyday Korean SUV, a great choice for city driving. It has also been reported that she owns a comfortable Range Rover Sport. As for real estate, the Wright and Knightley couple owned a house in London in a lively neighborhood in the East End, which is considered a destination for intellectuals and people of the arts. Kira bought it in 2012 for three million from famous English actress Samantha Morton, but soon after she put it back on the market. In 2014, the star couple purchased a nice three-story 18th century mansion worth nearly six million dollars in the Canonbury neighborhood of Greater London. Five cozy bedrooms with fireplaces, four bathrooms, a kitchen dining room, a spacious living room, and a wine cellar make it very much like the timeless home of a typical respectable English family. The interior of the home is absolutely classic and is done in light shades with occasional accent pieces. 
Until 2017, Knightley owned a luxury apartment in New York City, which he sold for $6 million. The reason for the sale is unknown, and many are perplexed as to how they could part with such an amazing place to live. This two-story apartment is located in the heart of Manhattan and is furnished as comfortably and tastefully as possible. Light modern geometry, soft colors of finishes combined with noble wood, and bright accents in textiles and furniture make this place truly unique. The property exceeds 3,800 square feet and features three bedrooms, a huge kitchen, a private patio, and striking 23-foot ceilings. In all the homes of the family reigns an atmosphere of elegant restraint, peace and warmth, seasoned with good taste, which the actress brings in everything she touches. Kira Knightley is a very bright, talented, and hardworking actress. She is successful not only in her profession, but also in her family life, which is a rarity in the movie industry. She is particularly good at historical movies. There are persistent rumors in Hollywood that the legendary Barbara Streisand is going to make a movie about Catherine the Great, in which Knightley may play the lead role. Do you think Kira would portray the Empress well? Now, we really must be going. Hey, well. Good day, Mr. Turner. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.